Hi, and welcome to the Starter for 10 podcast. I'm Mani Carmelita, Artistic Director of 10 Days on the Island, Tasmania's statewide arts festival. Join us as we get to know the creative minds who'll come together to create our festival in 2025. Get to know the person behind the art form, follow the journey of a work as it is created, or spark your own creativity and curiosity as we delve into and around culture. Daniel Zika, thank yes. you so much for joining us today. Um, it's such a treat to speak with you. Uh, I've had a little bit of an insight into the history that you've had with 10 Days on the Island, and that's what we're going to really delve into now. Um, so let's just jump on in. Mm-hmm. Can you share with our listeners a little bit about yourself mm-hmm. uh, and how you initially became involved with the very first 10 days on the island? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm a Melbourne boy. Uh, early, mid-20s, uh, started doing festivals and I was a lighting designer and production manager of festivals and theatre around Australia mm. um, and started working at the Adelaide Festival, 96, I think, and did a couple of festivals there and um, there was a production manager at that time there. Robin was the artistic director, um, 98, um, and 10 Days was starting up. Uh, Elizabeth Walsh was um, looking for somebody to be the production manager, operations manager. And, um, yeah, asked the then production manager of Adelaide um, if he had any recommendations and I kind of came up and I was obviously had enough beans and some sort of sense of myself (laughs) and uh, managed to get the gig. So, yeah, it was... um, yeah, it was it was great. It was um, fantastic um, starting a festival from scratch, mm. and um, and so I was living in Melbourne and would come over for one week each month, and then spend about four months here during the festival mm. lead up and wrap up. And mm. Yeah, it was um, fantastic. Mm. I didn't realise that you'd worked with Robin in Adelaide before then coming together with her here. Mm. Um, And how did it feel stepping into this place? Had you been to La Truita, Tasmania before? (laughs) Uh, uh, I had uh, with family and I have um, one family member down here. Mm. Um, But, yeah, I arrived in the middle of June and I was picked up from the airport on a... a, Cold, um, blustery day. Cold, blustery day (laughs) on a Sunday and ready for the first day in the office on Monday morning and um, dropped at the uh, conservatory, have a little cottage and uh, had a gap under the door about this big (laughs) and there was nothing in that con cottage that made any sound or apart from a little blow heater and I was really thrown in at the deep end, that's for sure. (laughs) Welcome to Tasmania. That's incredible, isn't it? Are there any um, moments or events from that first festival that really stand out in your mind? Oh, boy. Um, Look, there's probably personal ones and yes. then there's um, then there's kind of funny ones but also good reflection ones. Yeah. You know, uh, um, there were moments where there was uh, the tang quartet from very uptight, you know, profes- a highly sort of professional mm. um, string quartet from Singapore mm. um, met in the pub with um, Fiddler's Bid who were a fiddle playing group from Shetland Islands mm. and to see the Tang Quartet and Fiddler's Bid jamming in the Oak Hotel Royal Oak in Launceston was an amazing thing. That's pretty special. Or um, Robin and the then Premier um, Jim Bacon sharing a car on the way back from the launch um, doing dirty limericks Mm -hmm. um, in the car all the (laughs) way back. But also other things like um, we had done, we did, first year we did an event at Port Arthur Mm. and Martin Bryant, 96. Mm. This was 2000, 2001. Yes. It was heavy down there. It was really heavy. And it took a lot of an emotional um, guts mm. for that community to have us down there. Mm-hmm. So there was things like that where 
you know, you kind of look back and reflect on it and go, wow, that was really quite a powerful thing mm. that a festival can do. Re- it it's really becomes apparent the power of art and, you know, its ability to bring, it, bring a community together in a very special way that can heal or celebrate, you know, can become Absolutely. really joyful. And thinking back to that first 10 days on the island, that first festival really in the Tasmanian landscape mm. as far as I understand mm. it, That's right. how, how do you feel the, the community as a whole responded? Uh, obviously there were those moments and events that were very personal to a particular community, but did they embrace the festival as a whole? Yeah, absolutely. I think the first time round, they didn't quite get it until they, it was there. Yeah, I think Robin did an amazing job at programming, and if I I look back at the program Mm. now, I think the blend of really classic stuff, and Mm -hmm. we've got the program here in front of us, and it's very, very classical Mm. um, in its style. Mm. Um, I think the programming was a really great mix. For those that knew festivals mm. and knew what the sort of art would that would be in the festival, she programmed for them, mm-hmm. but she also programmed for the people that would have never been mm. to a festival like this at mm. all. And because of, it was statewide, she put that that kind of content where those people were, mm. and that gave that gave um, those communities a sense that it was there. Mm-hmm. So the second year round, mm. Ross was knocking on the door saying, what have you got for us this year? Oh, what are we fantastic. doing this year? Yeah. We're King Island saying, what are we going to do this year? Mm. You know, well, what are you going to bring us? We want to be involved again. Mm. So by the second time round, you know, it really was really embraced mm. really wildly mm. um, and then just went on and, and on and on from mm. there until other festivals um started up in Tasmania mm, and yes. really gave us um, the the broad artistic life that we have down here. Mm, a taste for it and, yeah. um, you know, also uh, I guess, um, you know, building an audience for a festival and the kind of work that sits in a festival but also um, building the technical expertise and Absolutely. the marketing expertise and, yeah. Um, yeah, what did it, I mean, you came from a festival an events background, but um, did did ten days and and those first couple of festivals. What what did they mean to you personally to be involved? Yeah, well, I, um, for me because I was young, um, but also you know festivals like that, as you know, take a certain amount of energy, mm. so they normally do attract younger, mm. especially on the production side of mm-hmm. things. Um, it, it, you know, people around Australia were sort of asking, oh, what, what's going on down there? And my <laughs> colleagues would ask and and by the second festival, yeah, it was really quite a, a, a buzz about mm. this festival in Tasmania and I had people from around the world saying, I want to come and work on it, you know, those kind of festival junkies mm-hmm. that, that travel around just working on festivals. Indeed. Um, so, but I think for me it was also about growing that sense of the technical team here Mm. was really um, important Mm. and we've had, I've had staff that I had as secondments or interns go on and and be theatre people all around Australia. Mm. So from Tasmania but from the rest of Australia as well. Mm. So, um, yeah, for me it was a really um, powerful starting Point and I think also unique in the fact that it's all around the state. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's quite unique in mm. that sense, isn't it? And I think um, has that broad reaching kind of community impact that you're talking about with communities kind of banging on the door to say, how can we, how can we be part of this? How can we be involved? Um, we were looking at, at some of the materials here that you've collected um, over the years. I hear you have the the largest collection of <laughs> 10 days on the island promo materials. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and can you tell me about, um, you know, how your professional life morphed from, you know, being in theatres and um, lighting design and, and that kind of technical world uh, into, um, you know, creating design more in a, a kind of graphics or, or marketing space? Yeah, sure. Well, I think it was a, um, a natural thing, mm. I think, um, for me, collecting these and holding on to these is, I think, about this um, um, ephemeral nature of what we do mm. and having some sort of connection back to the memories about that um, and being able to kind of flick through things in, you know, not sitting there. Mm. <laughs> but um, Of an evening. Yeah, of an evening. <laughs> but I think you know what I mean. To yeah. have something there that you can yeah. kind of say, I want to put that there mm. and keep it for a while. But and I suppose morphing into this kind of graphics world is is it's still a collaboration of creative people coming together to Definitely. do something. Yes. Which I think theatre is probably the most collaborative art form there is. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas I suppose design from what we do is still trying to um, collaborate mm. and come together, but it's also about solving a problem mm. for a client mm. um, and it's maybe a little less um, ephemeral. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, but the broad sort of work that we do here at Fotago means that um, we still get to solve a really broad range of problems mm-hmm. for our clients mm-hmm. and dig deep into almost like analysing a script mm-hmm. in a way, yes. you know, like on a first read of, yeah. a, of a show. That's a great analogy. Um, getting to dig into all the net mm. nooks and crannies and to understand really what is the problem we're here to solve. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so we take a lot of time at Fotago to und- to diagnose the problem mm-hmm. um, and to prescribe the the antidote for that problem instead of just taking it on face value from what our clients bring to us. That is a really beautiful way to think about storytelling, isn't it? You know, what is what is the, the the problem or the issue or the gap and how do we create, um, you know, stories around that to, to fill the gap? That's really beautiful. Um, can you tell us about Fatago? How did the studio start? What, yeah. what was its birth story? Well, it was started by Kate, my business partner, mm-hmm. and her twin sister. Um, uh, Fatago means uh, twins in Japanese, mm-hmm. and they are identical twins. Mm-hmm. And I met Kate uh, 2004, and um, and in 2005 I moved down here. And what attracted me to work in the studio was the the feeling that Tasmania was kind of like, well, if you can't do it here, where can you do it? Mm. Where can you collaborate with architects or designers or um, other type of artists and make something? Um, So, and that was a shared passion Mm -hmm. from Kate. Mm -hmm. Um, She's a... um, a, architect graduate, mm-hmm. not actually a graphic oh, designer. Wow. Yeah. So she came at solving problems of the place mm. and I think that that is really strongly evident in the work that we do mm-hmm. as well. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so basically from 2005, nearly 20-odd years, mm. um, we work across all uh, aspects of design mm-hmm. Um, from branding and packaging and wayfinding and public art um, through to digital mm. and the whole gamut of things. Mm. But, again, it's it's about solving a problem, mm. Um, mm. whether it be digitally through a website or through the Royal Hobart Hospital. Mm. And you've brought such kind of different, um, well, I was going to say schools of thought, but they're not really, you know, architecture and lighting design. You know, they come come from the same worlds in a way. Um, yeah. But bringing them to this work, I think, would be really interesting, um, just having that different perspective. Hi, Kate. Hi, Marnie. Thank you so much for having us here. Pleasure. In your beautiful uh, and very exciting and inspiring design studio. 
I've just got a couple of questions for you. Um, I wanted to uh, go back to, I guess, your first experience of 10 days on the island. How did it feel for you to see and experience your first festival at the time? Yeah, well, it's um, incredible how vivid it still is. Really? Even though it was such a long time ago. But I think um, for context, like Tasmania had been pretty economically depressed Mm. for quite a long time and, and the 90s, in particular, like when I came to Hobart, it felt like there was just a heaviness mm. about Hobart and Tasmania and everyone was kind of whinging and mm. complaining. And then there was this, yeah, this talk of this new festival mm. and our premier at the time, Jim Bacon, was kind of doing some really positive initiatives, which as a young person mm-hmm. at university was really inspiring. Mm. Um, so I remember, I can't remember whether it was a first or second festival, but when they took over um, Salamanca mm. and did like the opening um Piece mm-hmm. and there was a beautiful um, the performers on stilts. Oh yes, um, strange fruit yes. was it? Yep. Yes, yeah, yes, um, yeah. And it was just amazing. Yeah. And to have yeah the cars taken out of Salamanca mm-hmm. and for it to feel like wow, mm. you know, we've finally got something that's international mm. standard happening on our doorstep. Mm. So yeah, and to just be able to. Um, walk and see some theatre that had come from the island yes. and um, as a student at the time just feel really energised, like, oh, you know, that I didn't need to go to Melbourne or yeah. Sydney to, to have that experience. Mm. So it was um, very optimistic and inspiring. And so you were a student at the time. Yes. Mm. Yep. Yeah. That's yep. incredible, isn't it, just to feel like your city's come alive. And I, th- I guess you were studying architecture, is yeah. that right? Yes, so I was. kind of a, a similar world yep. uh, in terms of... Um, impacting on space, did it feel like it it kind of changed the physicality of of the city? Definitely, I think, um, because, yeah, it was seeing how other people, you know, Mm. could come in and Mm reimagine our spaces Mm -hmm. and just, yeah, even just that energy. There was another, might have been the second festival where there was um, a a concert that was happening in the Salamanca Mm. Square and, yeah, the energy around that and, you know, a lot of people coming together that just hadn't been that. I hadn't mm. experienced that before mm. in Hobart at least. Um, so, yeah, it was just very transformative. That's incredible. And now you have a design studio in Salamanca Place, yep. which is kind of full circle in a way. That's true. Um, and what do you love uh, about uh, being the design partner for 10 Days on the Island? This will be your your second festival coming up in 2025. Um, well, I think it is that like knowing how kind of formative experiencing that first festival was and you know, I remember sitting near Machine Cafe on the s- Sunday after the festival finished that mm. first one and there was Jim Bacon and Robin Archer were having coffee <laughs> and that's such a Tasmanian thing to, be able yeah. to kind of walk past and see the premier. The premier <laughs> and, and the artistic director yeah. of the festival, yeah. yeah. So I think, yeah, I've always had a huge soft spot for the festival mm. and, and acknowledging what it did and doing it in quite a difficult, challenging environment at mm. the time. Um, so, and it's really exciting, I think, when your peers and, um, with Caro, Mm. marketing manager, you know, um, having, being able to work together and really believe in something and know that if you combine your skills, you can actually make it so much better. Mm -hmm. And I think over the years, I've seen the design component Mm. for 10 days go interstate Mm. and without wanting to sound protectionist. Mm -hmm. There's uh, unfortunately there's a lot of context and local nuance mm. that gets missed by mm. external mm. designers when it comes to those sorts of things. So it's it's been a, a disappointment sometimes seeing how that it hasn't flourished. Mm-hmm. I think from the design and mm. communication side. So it's um, but I think it's yeah it's, it's just really great to feel like we're part of helping make the festival. Um, as brilliant as it can be mm. and should be, and make sure it's absolutely treasured by everyone. Mm. It's um, it's I th- I agree with you. I think, you know, we need to tell the stories of this place and really connect with the people of this place. And so having that Tasmanian voice, I think, is really precious uh, and super inspiring uh, as well. Um, I'm guessing that you've been to a few 10 days events in your time going back over the last 20 years or so. Do any stand out or, um, you know, how do you how do you feel at a 10 days event? Does it feel like a, um, you know, 
know, formative experience because of where you came from with the festival or fun or um, uh, life-changing, you know, transforming hearts and minds? Yeah, well, I, um, I've, yeah, I've been to most festivals. Mm. There's probably a couple of years where I, I didn't. Um, but when I have, I've always kind of tried to get along to as many things as I can mm-hmm. because I love that energy of festival where you can see lots of different works and the diversity of it. And when I'm experiencing that, I'm really conscious the fact that, you know, an artistic director has gone to a lot of trouble and spent time travelling the world and thinking and curating that program for you and that you're never going to have that experience again. Mm. And then to be able to share those experiences with other people, you know, it's a very unique thing. And Mm. even though it's kind of ephemeral and fleeting, it can have a very lasting impact. So I know when I, you know, travel up and down the state, I'll kind of think of it, you know, there'll be a historic homestead or something Mm. where there will have been a really particular exhibition Mm -hmm. or concert and I'll go, wow, you know, I remember that Mm. um, because of that experience and um, they're always so well crafted Mm. and professional and of international standing. So, yeah, that's what I like. I love the energy Mm. and um, the diversity and I feel like I place a high amount of trust, I guess, in what that director has put together Mm -hmm. so I don't have to think about it. I go, well, I know that's going to be good because – you know, they're next on the line. They've, mm. they're mm. going to have chosen really well um, and I'm going to trust in that and have zero expectations apart from to be surprised and hopefully, yeah, um, touched. Oh, well, we love having you on board. So thank you again so much for, for being our design partner but also for your uh, support and enthusiasm for the festival. Thanks, Kate. Absolute pleasure. Thanks, Thanks. Marnie. Thanks for joining us on Starter for 10. If you'd like to know more about what's coming up at 10 Days on the Island, visit www.10days.org.au and subscribe to our free newsletter.